Hi YouTube, it's Tom here. I hope you're doing great. Back here with another video for you. Uh, this week I've been doing a lot of debugging and figuring out things like Maven dependencies in my projects and debugging goals and plugins and all that kind of stuff and that gave me the idea of producing this video for you because what I wanted to do is share with you the tools that I use when I'm getting a bit confused with Maven uh, and how you can use the features built into IntelliJ to really learn a bit more about what Maven is doing under the hood. So the thing I'm going to show you is the Maven projects view inside IntelliJ. So what I have open right now is a really simple Maven project. This is a Apache Camel um, Fuse project. Um, to get to the Maven projects view, which is where you'll see all your Maven info on your project, you can either go to the view menu and then uh, click tool windows and then go to Maven. Or if you already have a file open, then you can just hit Alt, Shift and F1 on the keyboard. And in this pop-up view, pop view that comes up, you can pick Maven and it will show you the Maven projects window here. So the Maven tool window is really useful because it gives you a visual overview of what's happening inside your project, at least from a Maven perspective. So um, I'm going to go through each of these three sections with you because they're really important and useful to have. Starting with dependencies, this is where you can view all your dependencies in your application. This is really useful to find if you're missing a dependency, for example, or you might be finding that some dependencies are clashing with each other. You can really drill down into each dependency that you're pulling in and find out, well, what are the transitive dependencies of that dependency and so on and so on. So if I look at this example here. This is a Camel project, so I'm pulling the Camel Spring Boot starter, which itself will pull in Camel Spring Boot, and it also pull in Camel Core, which itself will pull in a bunch of other dependencies as well. So you can really use this view to drill down and find out what's going on in your project. The next thing I want to show you in this view is the lifecycle list. Now this will show you all the different phases that I can execute on my project. And these are the standard phases that come with Maven out of the box. Um, for example, you might recognize things like test or clean or install. So each of these are also listed in the order that Maven would normally execute them. So this is really useful to be able to see exactly what the standard phases in a typical Maven project are. If you want to see more phases, you can always go to this menu at the top right uh, and untick show basic phases and it will show you all the other intermediate phases as well. And this is useful for you to see exactly what the different phases are in your project. And so then the plugins list, which is the third thing I want to show you, uh, will show you all of the plugins that are configured as part of your project. Um, this is a Spring Boot application, so I've configured the Spring Boot Maven plugin. And for each plugin, um, it will show you first uh, the prefix that you can use to execute any goals on that plugin. So for the Spring Boot plugin, its prefix is Spring Boot. And then if I expand this, then it will show me all the different goals that I can execute. So for example, if I want to run my Spring Spring Boot project, I would normally type Maven Spring Boot colon run, or I can just double click on this entry in the list and uh, IntelliJ will do that for me. The other interesting thing about this plugins list is that it will show you the plugins that are, that you may not have configured explicitly yourself, but are configured because they are part of the default Maven plugin bindings. So because I'm building a jar, I'm going to pull in things like the Maven jar plugin, the Maven clean plugin, and the Maven compiler plugin. So these things help you understand what Maven is actually doing behind the scenes, even if you don't explicitly configure these plugins yourself. And then finally, Profiles. So this is a really important one if you're working with profiles in Maven. So profiles are a way that you can change the way that Maven works based on whether a certain profile is active, a certain group of settings, if you like. So um, as this is a project which I'm going to deploy to OpenShift, I've configured a separate profile in my project called OpenShift. It's down here somewhere. So this profile OpenShift. And when this profile is active, I'm going to use the Fabricate Maven plugin to help me deploy my Spring Boot application onto OpenShift or Kubernetes. Now, if I then want to see this in the Maven view, normally if I go to plugins, I'll see that my Fabricate plugin, which I've just shown you, is not shown here. That's because I don't have the OpenShift plugin activated. So if I want to activate it and see how that would impact my Maven project, I just tick the box. So uh, enable the OpenShift profile and let's enable auto import of all the plugins and everything that I need. And then you'll see now in my list here, it will say that I actually 
now have the Fabricate Maven plugin configured. Oh, and there's something wrong here. This means obviously I've not been able to download the plugin, but as you can see, this gives you um, a good overview of what's happening inside your Maven projects, and I find this really useful when I'm debugging and thinking exactly what Maven is up to. Um, that's it for this little video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope it's been useful for you. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Cheers.